Hi, welcome to the English Language Institute of Singapore's podcast, also known as the Ellis Podcast. Here, we discuss current topics related to the teaching, learning, and assessment of English language with our very own master teachers. I am Victoria, and I am your host. Today, we are exploring inquiry through dialogue, one of the three pedagogical emphases of English Language Syllabus 2020. Here with me is EL Master Teacher, Madam Audrey Lee, who will be discussing questioning techniques with us. Hello, Audrey. Hi, Victoria. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Can you share a little bit about yourself to our listeners? Oh, I've been a secondary school teacher for about 30 years. It was only later on in my career that I started to think about talk as a tool for thinking. My focus expanded from planned talk to spontaneous talk as well. Why do we need questioning techniques with inquiry through dialogue? For example, if someone made an assertion but did not back it up, another student would be prompted naturally, not by looking at a framework of questions, but out of sheer curiosity. You said this. Why did you say that? What happened to cause you to say that? Walsh and Satz talk about an essential question. Maybe the essential understandings that we want as a result of doing a lesson unit. How do you integrate it in your lessons? Sometimes when a student makes an assertion about an issue, what I could ask would be just to open up a point of view or perspective. How do you think your grandmother would feel about this? What do you think they would say about this? And if they disagree with your stand, what could persuade them? And I would ask them to share with each other so that there is a sense of safety first and a rehearsal of their answers before they present it to the class. So flexible grouping is also important in terms of structuring this kind of talk as process. Otherwise, students might see that the teacher is posing a question, I need to give an answer. And I want to please her by giving a correct or an acceptable answer. However, if I structure it in terms of, okay, guys, this is a question, turn to your partner or turn to your trio and work Mm. in threes and share. Then after that, nominate one person to represent your group. So they get a chance to rehearse their talk Mm. and see it as a process before they offer it to the rest of the class. So points of view, that's uh, one of the six questions in the Socratic questioning, right? Yes, that's right. But I think it can be used in at any level, uh, at a primary school level, but it has to be personalized. So I would ask students before they step out and look at another point of view to bring themselves to a younger self and to reconsider their own thoughts at that time. Another type of Socratic question is question the question. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sometimes when students are allowed the time and space to reflect on how the discussion went and the kinds of questions they asked, because you're speaking, it is very difficult to reflect on, you know, what your contributions are. So what I usually do is I partner an A with a B, and they will take turns. B would actually scribe all the questions and contributions that A would offer and and then hand back the script to A to reflect on. So there is a capturing of the contribution. And even if there was no contribution, B could offer a suggestion like, oh, maybe you could have asked this question at this point. Could you give an example of such an activity? This is something I tried within a Socratic circle. So there were two concentric circles. So A would sit inside the inner circle and contribute to the discussion. There would be an open prompt. The partner, B, would sit outside the circle and observe either the body language and then basically scribe all the questions and comments that A had offered. After the discussion was over, I gave them time to look at the types of responses they had given, how they might want to improve in future. So the kinds of questions they asked, did it move understanding of the entire group 
towards the essential question. And it's okay if you have a minor rather than key questions and students shouldn't be waiting until a question that would move the earth and shake the skies <laughs> came to them. They shouldn't do that. They should be able to recognize that, oh, okay, so these are the smaller things that I've offered. Perhaps in future, I would move towards things such as implications and consequences. I might ask, oh, if you said that, perhaps you are assuming something about the audience or about the situation. So they would be given time and space to consider how they could have improved. So they are in fact questioning the way they question. And what I did was I made sure that the discussion skills were structured over a period of time, meaning that I had discussion one in say term one, and then I told them there would be another discussion in term two. And I asked them to set their own goals in terms of how they wanted to move their discussion skills onwards. Mm. So they would then track their own development. So they, they had to self-assess and they had to talk about the standards that they wanted to achieve. And I offered them some samplers of good discussions. So things that were authentic and in real life, uh, BBC, um, Talking Point, so that they could see how they would like to move eventually, you know, towards a, a fluent and a well thought out and persuasive uh, argument, but done in a very civil manner. Did you find this was difficult for the learners? Any challenges in terms of keeping track of their own learning and being aware of where were the gaps of their learning? Hmm. Uh, I think that that's always uh, the, the problem with talk, that it is fleeting. Uh, so I tried to, to get others to help them to capture. So there would be always one observer. Perhaps if there were a pair speaking, then one person would take notes, be observer, and then to take notes. And they, they would rotate and play these roles. And when they played uh, the observer's role, they became a little bit more sensitive as well. And we talked about uh, the different aspects of contributing towards uh, a discussion. And sometimes, yes, they found problems in negotiating, for example, a, a point. And they didn't know how to do it in a civil manner. And we went back to this idea of in order to help each other, you, you need a respectful classroom. And there's no point uh, dissing each other mm. or, or going into debate mode. Uh, and my students, I think, were familiar with the debate mode because they, they felt that, oh, if I have a stand, I'll just stick to the stand and I'll just hammer at uh, whichever point that you're about to offer. So they 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 understood the, the point of a debate. But to manage a discussion to facilitate it, to push it on so that everybody gained and everybody felt invited and everybody would then want to contribute mm. was uh, one of the goals that I have as well uh, in terms of um, facilitating collaborative uh, discussions. Does this involve establishing ground rules? Yes. So we had norms that we talked about. We also uh, examined uh, discussions that sort of went south. So they had to decide as a group and it couldn't be me that they wanted to build rather than to uh, take down each other. Mm. What you've talked about is very related to the STP pedagogical practice using questions to deepen learning. You're right. I think when I went on this journey of using talk as a thinking tool, I was surprised at how much planning I had to do beforehand. And sometimes how I would have to throw out my script. <laughs> Although I had planned a number of questions, the students came up with better questions. Those who perhaps were more laid back surprised me. They may not have used the most accurate language, but they had ideas to offer the others and to see that they were a part of a group. And I think I learned from them as much as the entire experience of trying to move talk from product to process. Thank you, Audrey, for giving us your time and insights. Thanks, Victoria. We hope this has inspired you to look deeper into your practices 
and unleash the rich potential of inquiry through dialogue in your classrooms. If you would like to find out more about what we touched on, please look at our show notes, which have links to the resources. I'm Victoria. Good day.